Hey guys, this is Courtney from Lil's Bloom. Today we are going to be discussing the Libra New Moon happening on September 25th at 3.54 p.m. Mountain Time and you guys can figure that out for your time zone. So this new moon is happening at two degrees of Libra and one of the first cards that I pulled for this was the elk card, um, which I do, which when I looked up what the elk spirit animal meant, it has to do with community. And when I was actually meditating on this energy, that was the word that came out was community. Um, specifically, I think that we are going to be editing friendships and learning how to work with others. And so we're going to get more into the details of that. But really quick, I did want to do some housekeeping. I am going to be running an Astrothon. I'm still kind of figuring out the name. If you guys like that name, let me know. Um, but I believe it's going to start on October 9th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and essentially what I'm going to do is post an astrology video every single day for about 22 days. So I'm still kind of figuring out all the little details, but I've already started to work on the content. I'm super, super excited. Um, so basically what I have it broken down into is astrology teaching. So basically kind of specific areas of, that interest me that I think are extremely important that are maybe not discussed in this particular way very often or don't go super deep into this topic um, and that are, are very prevalent or very important in somebody's chart. So I'm going to be t discussing a number of topics associated with just teaching astrology, um, which is going to be in the sort of intermediate zone. I think most of my channel is kind of in the intermediate zone, but you can come on as a beginner for some of the the things. I will I will do my best to explain for beginners as well, but it's going deep enough for at least intermediate. Um, and then I'm also going to be breaking down individual charts of people kind of looking at maybe big moments in their life or uh, their career direction, their love life, something notable about that person. I'm going to get into their chart and how that actually makes sense given what's going on on their chart. So this will give you guys an idea of how to apply astrology. So I'm giving you the teachings, I'm giving you the background, and then I'm applying it. And then the third layer of application is going to be with my synastry readings, which are going to look at couples, maybe why those couples came together, what their relationship was like, if they did break up, why they might be breaking up, or looking at transits of when that happened. Um, and so we're kind of going to see the karma that we live our life in our charts play out in terms of an individual, their life and their career, as well as partnerships and how that karma kind of plays off one another. So if you are interested in that, definitely subscribe, tell your friends about it. Stay tuned for October 9th. And yeah, I can't wait. So the last thing I wanted to mention was that I also have a super fun quiz where it took me a really long time to make actually, but um, if you're interested in finding out a planet that helps or best represents your personality and maybe how others perceive you or some dominant or leading energy in your life, then definitely check that out linked in the description box down below. It can be very insightful to help understand yourself better. So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the video. As I mentioned, I think that this Libra new moon is largely focused around community. It's interesting that it also is occurring at two degrees of Libra, which in numerology is obviously a coupling, a pairing, you know, uniting of two different forces. Um, so I think the fact that this is occurring at two degrees is not a coincidence. Um, and Libra is already associated with others and relationships in general as it is. On top of this... Venus and Mercury, as we can see, are loosely conjunct this new moon. And so we are already getting the influence here of relationships with Venus. And then, of course, Mercury, which is about connecting and communication and understanding one another. So there's a lot about coming together and reflecting on our current dynamics. And so we can really see this play out, um, you know, in the cards I'm about to present, but in some of the other things that I think are going to be taking place around this time. So another thing to consider is that this new moon is also opposite Jupiter, almost exactly actually in Aries. And so this is what is going to, this is what kind of makes me feel like there may be a, a more kind of definitive analysis that we have around our existing connections. Maybe how we show up in connections, how we feel about people in our lives. If we're trying to meet new people, we might be sussing them out. You know, is this person 
going to fit who I want to be. Um, there may be ways in which our sense of personal growth and independence don't necessarily align with existing connections. And so we might start to feel a little bit of that, you know, push towards new friendships, new dynamics, or establishing a different type of relationship with our existing friends. Um, this may be for some of us working with some of our friends to achieve a common goal. This may be um, investing less energy into our current friendships, pulling back, you know, maybe not trusting people as much as we were trusting them. And then um, maybe it's just going out and finding new connections that align in a bigger way with you. So I think many of us will be kind of assessing our sense of community and support. How well do I feel understood and supported by these people? Can I show up and support in a bigger and better way? And with Jupiter opposing this in the sign of Aries, which is about the individual, there may be those clashes of growing as an individual versus growing as a collective and kind of knowing how to balance that. Um, and honestly, Jupiter is such a benefic planet that I think it's not going to be this extremely challenging, upsetting kind of discovery. Um, I think it's mostly going to be something that feels exciting, like we're pulling to our next version of ourselves. And it feels like we might, if we are leaving behind some friendships, it might feel like we're sloughing off kind of dead skin, removing some dead weight rather than this feeling of of being like a tragedy, I guess. Um, and I also feel like because it's a new moon, it it has this sense of a new beginning, a spring emerging. So this can bring about, again, new relationships. So it feels like you're not just leaving behind old, but you're stepping into something new. Um, it definitely feels more of like a transition rather than an ending. And so I think that this can also feel, again, very uplifting in terms of kind of what humans perceive and what we're looking for. Uh, also, this new moon is making a loose trine to Pluto here in Capricorn. So I think this is also relevant for the cleansing aspect, which I pulled the cleansing card in relation to friendships. I think that Pluto gives us divine insight and guidance about our truth and about what's really happening underneath the surface of things. And it gives us the ability to see past maybe some illusions that we've built before or the habits of time and kind of tradition and foundation in our relationships and it helps us see what's really going on in our current dynamic do I really benefit from this person still or am I just friends with them because I've been friends with them for a really long time or can I really trust this new person can we connect on a deep level are they actually supporting me through my soul's evolution Pluto just cuts through to the beat cuts through the BS to the truth of the matter. And so I think it's going to allow us to be open to this cleansing, this regeneration process, because we're able to almost get this higher perspective with a combination of Jupiter and Pluto about where we're going as an individual, as a soul across lifetimes. And through that higher perspective, it's going to be quite easy to make these decisions and know what's best for us. I also pulled a strengthen card or strength card, which to me with this trying to Pluto is a strengthening of existing connections that feel right for you. So investing even more or doubling down or collaborating with the people that you care about because the strength card and this time with Pluto and also Venus being loosely conjunct this moon is representing that we are understanding which connections are in alignment right now. And we want to cultivate those. We want to support those because those will support us. And the last card was a victory. So I feel like this is not only indicating that our relationships in a sense will be victorious, but also that they can help us achieve something in our lives because the people we surround ourselves with, of course, are going to make a huge impact on our goals, you know, where we spread our energy, they, they're they influencing us on a daily basis. And so this victory card to me is suggesting that I think that we are aligning with people that will help us become victorious in a certain area of our lives. And this is going to look different for everyone. And you might have different friends that help you with different parts of your life. Maybe some help you with understanding your emotional nature. Maybe some help you in your career and you collaborate with them. Maybe some are just friends to go out, but they help bring some levity into some of the serious or dark nights of the soul type of situation. So every person is going to have a different influence. I think we're going to start to see who we can utilize. I hate to, to say use or utilize, but 
who we can have in our lives to help us achieve what we desire in that area. So it's a facilitation of something and it's also mutually beneficial. So it's not like we're using people and thinking about what we can get out of them. It's about a truly um, mutually beneficial union where we can help them and they can help us. And so that's really what I'm seeing around this new moon is a huge, huge focus on relationships, on talking about relationships, understanding relationships, pruning and prodding. I mean, Mercury and Venus are in the sign of Virgo, which has to do with decluttering or um, cutting out the fat. And so you might really start to see where you are putting your energy, where you're investing and begin to cut out the fat so you can put more energy into the things that are working. Mercury and Venus are also making a trine to Pluto. In particular, Mercury is making an almost exact trine to Pluto, which I think confirms this process of being able to connect more deeply and understand the truth in existing connections, as I mentioned. However, we also have Mercury and Venus opposite Neptune. Um, and so I don't think this is as clear and as easy as I've kind of been talking about so far because Mercury and Venus opposite Neptune can create a sense of confusion around what's really going on. And I think it's going to be up to us to use Mercury, even though it is retrograde <laughs> right now. So our communication might not be the strongest right now as it could be, especially opposite Neptune. We can maybe communicate things around friendships, around connections that leave people more confused than when we went in um but mercury while it is retrograde is in its home sign of virgo and so it is confident here it is detail oriented fact based here it feels like it can conceptualize things but then there with this opposition with neptune i think it's almost like you can grasp it but maybe there's a desire for sensitivity or understanding or love that then confuses the message that then makes you maybe use different words or articulate things in a way that is stepping around the issue or that straight up doesn't address the issue. Or maybe you say something that's actually, again, more confusing than what you are thinking internally. Um, but just, there's an idea here that there can be a filter through our conversations or, or like a lens that's just foggy. And so we might have a clear idea of what's going on. They might have a clear idea of what's going on, but they might be totally, two totally different things. So definitely be careful of that. I pulled the Ace of Swords and the Seven of Cups. So I feel like that's what it's talking about here is having confusing conversations. We have an opportunity to have very clear insight with this trying with Pluto and become very decisive and oriented to what we want and what we know. But then the transmission... And the sharing of that information with the Seven of Cups, um, which is actually ruled by Neptune, can become diluted. It can become confused. Um, so again, just be really careful about that and try to try your best to lead with honesty. And again, you don't want to hurt people's feelings. But at the same time, uh, I think it's super important to be direct about exactly what's going on at the time of this new moon. Um we also have Mars making a trine to Saturn, which is exact. Mars is in Gemini. I did a whole video about Mars in Gemini. It's going to be here for a long time um, until actually next year. So you definitely want to check that out because this is going to stir up a lot of energy in your chart wherever you have Gemini. And so because it's spending such a long time here, which it normally doesn't, um, you're going to have an ample opportunity to invest more into doing something about this area of your life to improve it, to make it better, to, to go after what you want. Um, so definitely check that video out. But as I mentioned, Mars is making a trying to Saturn almost exact. And this is our applied and dedicated effort to work hard towards something. I pulled the king of pentacles. And so to me, this is you being really devoted to a certain task, a certain idea, um, or the creation of something in your life. Mars wants us to go out and create through our energy. It wants us to, <laughs> it is the planet of sex. So if you think about that in terms of doing, right, like tasks, we are bringing life into something. We are um, making something for the world to enjoy. And this could be on any level. This could be creating a new relationship if you're motivated by that writing a book. I mean, it could literally be any action, but the trying with Saturn is trying, 
it is supporting us, I should say, to become more dedicated to what it is we've decided to do, to become more consistent, which is so beneficial when Mars is in an immutable sign like Gemini. There is a little bit of squirreliness that can come with this, distractibility. And so Saturn is grounding us into a schedule, into a consistency. However, Mars is also squaring Neptune and Saturn is also squaring Uranus, which is going to be the last like tight square with Uranus that we've seen. We've been seeing this all last year and a little bit this year. So this is kind of the final push of this energy, um, which Saturn squaring Uranus, I guess I'll start there, is really about us desiring to create a change, but having conflicting desires to also have to also do what we've always done, to have tradition, to fall in line. Um, And so there may be some ways in which you are applying yourself and you're going out there and you're dedicating your energy towards something, but there's also a need for innovation um, that may be at conflict with what you've always done. So maybe asking yourself how you might be falling into habits or patterns and how you can blend being conservative and doing what you've done with innovation, with, pro- with progress. Um, and I think that is one of the biggest questions we've been asking ourselves over this past year, maybe, maybe even on a soul level. And there's a lot more I can say about that, but this, since it's been going on for so long, I'm not going to go into that very much, but Mars, as I mentioned, is also making a square to Neptune, which is a little bit concerning. It's not a super tight square. Um, but this is where I feel like the drive that we have, the ambition, the dedication, the dedication, um, while it is there, it is also being, um, confused or distorted or drained of energy a little bit with this square to Neptune. And I pulled the three of wands in reverse, which the three of wands is us about is is about us having a plan, about us having a direction, kind of knowing where we're going, what we're up to, what we want to create. And I think this Mars trying Saturn helps us get on that path and and move towards what we want. But the square to Neptune can create a little bit of a confusion. So not having all the details worked out, not knowing exactly what you're trying to get out of this in the end. Or maybe you go to do it and you are consistent, but maybe you're not as effective as you could be. Maybe there are certain random things that just kind of take your energy away or distract you or, um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's this point, especially with Mars being in Gemini, it's this point where imagination can be helpful, but also destructive in the sense that it can get you a little bit off track. Um, So it kind of feels like this energy of taking two steps forward and one step back. And this might manifest in everyone differently, depending on how it hits their personal chart, how they operate with Neptune in their daily lives anyway. So maybe for you, it feels like it's really not as productive as it could be. But I'm getting the sense that it's like we're really fighting to work hard, but it's a little bit of an uphill battle. We're walking a little bit against the tide energetically. And I think our sense of confusion or lack of direction or a distinct plan will really feed into this issue. So the more that we can do our best to flow with the energy while also having a sense of direction um, is, is essentially what we're trying to go after here. But again, if you struggle with this, that's totally normal with what's currently going on. So that is what I'm seeing for the new moon. Definitely stay tuned for all the rising signs, which I'm going to jump into now. Thank you guys for listening. All right. Up first, we have my beautiful Aries rising. For you guys, this Libra new moon is happening in your seventh house of partnerships. So this is going to be a stronger dose of what I was already mentioning in the overview around creating new relationships with people. I just pulled the three of pentacles, which actually has to do with working with others, which is a really strong thing that came through around collaboration. And I think it's especially true because Um, Mars is making this almost exact trine to Saturn and so it definitely has this feeling of let's get down to work let's put our energy into a directed and focused area and how can I utilize other people or relationships in my life to support these efforts and so I feel like this three of pentacles to me is saying that you guys have the potential right now to really 
find some new people in your life that can help you achieve something that you desire. And this can be different for anyone. You don't have to be working towards a specific career goal, which for many of you it likely is, but there might be something on a more personal basis that you're finding maybe a mentor to work with or a friend who has similar interests as you who will dedicate themselves to something like you will. It's it's gonna look different for everyone, But I'm definitely seeing a strong focus on utilizing the support of people around you. Maybe this is so that you can have a better schedule and make sure that you have somebody to be accountable with. Or maybe you're just improving your relationships in the workplace or becoming closer with certain people in the workplace. There's really a feeling of a new foundation being being laid here within relationships. And so it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm friends with this person and we're just getting we're just getting a little bit closer. It's like, okay, I don't really know this person. I see them every day. Let's actually go out and have a drink. Let's actually work on this project together, get to know each other better. And so you guys might really benefit from working one-on-one with people, um, from having more intimate conversations specifically about your goals and what you want to achieve. And you'll notice that people start to come in and offer you advice or the next steps about what to do in order to improve your chances of achieving what you want in life. Um, this new moon is also making a loose sec- uh, loose con- conjunction to Mercury and Venus. And so um, this is going to put extra emphasis on relationships and important conversations so again not missing out on sharing certain things with people especially because they're in the sign of virgo i would almost like share your plans share your details because i do think that people can come in here and help you fill in missing information that you might not even know is missing Uh, so really allowing yourself to rely on other people at this time is going to be very important And because this is also making, this new moon is also making a trine to Pluto in the 10th, some of the biggest area where you're going to spot truths and have some big transformations is in your career or life directions. So maybe some of you could be meeting a new partner um, and they're going to help you move up kind of in your status in life and you'll get married, which is very 10th house energy. Maybe some of you will be discovering the truth about existing relationships um, and decide to leave some of those behind. Maybe some of you will find people that will, again, help you within the workplace. It's going to look different for everyone, but there is this connection with your life objectives and your status and your career affecting your relationships and vice versa, especially your relationships affecting your career. Um, But... Mercury and Venus are also opposite Neptune in your 12th. So there is something to be aware of around um, not having all of the information. So missing information here where it might not become available for some time um, until maybe later this month. So just kind of keep that in mind when you are having conversations or making decisions there may not be the full picture represented about this person, this dynamic, or what's going on. And that can lead to some sense of confusion or, you know, missing each other in terms of conversations, like kind of being on two different pages or maybe being overly idealistic or overly analytical about something that's happening when I think merging the two is actually the reality. And so I think it'll take some time to kind of figure out, you know, what is really going on in the situation. So when having difficult conversations with relationships or founding conversations or important conversations, really keep this in the back of your mind that there may be some missing information. So I wouldn't necessarily like sign a contract around this time or really like lay things down in a very solid way. Um, I would wait a little bit towards the end of the month or the beginning of next month in order to do these more foundational things in your life and in your relationships. Okay, so very important for you guys, Mars, your chart ruler, so as an Aries, Mars is your ruling planet, is making a, is in your third house, making a trine to Saturn in your 11th house. This is really great for solidifying existing relationships in a way that's going to help you move forward. Um, And so what I was saying is wherever we have Mars hanging out, which for you is in your third house, so it might be very busy for you even over until next year, even when Mars is retrograde. I do get a sense that you will maybe feel a little bit 
anxious during this time period. You might feel like very stimulated, maybe a little bit overstimulated. And when Mars goes retrograde, you might feel like you're having to, like you're not fully equipped for that stimulation. Um, and Mar yeah, Mars is not retrograde at this time. I think it goes retrograde around Halloween. Um, so right now you're going to be really busy until then and you can handle it and blah, blah, blah. And then around Halloween, when it goes retrograde, you might feel like less equipped and you might have to reanalyze your current commitments and things like that. Anyway, watch the whole Mars and Gemini video because it's very important for you guys. But you guys are super busy. You have a lot on your plate right now with the trying to Saturn and 11th. This is giving you support from your friends, from your community, from other like-minded people to continue this path and to kind of encourage you to keep going. Um, maybe even to have a plan for the future, how this is going to feed into that. But while you have a lot of supportive work oriented energy, you also have Mars making a square to Neptune in the 12th, which is a little bit exhausting, which is a little bit confusing and can be sometimes emotionally draining. So there may be some elements of your life where you're having certain endings that can feel like they are physically or emotionally draining for you. And I say that also because I pulled the Ten of Swords and the reverse King of Cups. So the Ten of Swords is about a definitive ending and something in your life. And then the King of Cups is reversed, has to do with emotional dysregulation. And so I do feel like with this Mars squaring Neptune, your life force energy is a little bit depleted right now. And that's okay. If there is some transition that you are moving through um, with Mars trying Saturn and square Neptune, it's like you're building something up and letting something go. You're... Um, you know, not forcing, but working hard towards something while also leaking energy, while also maybe being confused um, and having to deal with like a more sensitive emotional side of your life. So you have kind of very different energy going on at the same time. So it's going to be important to protect yourself, um, to have a lot of self-care because Again, you are going to be very driven and pushed to work very hard. You are very busy, but there's also something else going on in maybe your personal life or in the background um, that can kind of take you away a little bit from, from these life goals and objectives, which is totally fine. It's faded. It's meant to be with these transits, um, but just know that. And sometimes maybe for some of you, it might be getting a cold, like as simple as with Neptune square Mars, not even just being low energy, but being more prone to like you know, infections or um, just a common cold. So just be a little bit more aware the seasons are changing, it's getting colder. Um, this is a time when people sometimes will get sick. So just monitor your energy. And again, make sure that you're filling up your cup, both emotionally and physically, in order to be able to sustain what's going on. And if you are a little bit more drained, and you have to work harder to provide self-care for yourself know that that's also normal with the transit going on also aries something that i may have forgot to say is that this moon is also opposite jupiter in your first house so what this means is that there may be this conflicting choice of others versus myself independence versus interdependence or reliance on another person um, and so this may come up especially right now as you maybe have new relationships entering your life or new evolutions of your current relationships where you may have to feel like at some time at some point in time you are choosing between your own personal growth and the reliance or working together or codependence with somebody else so just kind of recognize when that's playing out and how you can best achieve a sense of balance with these two energies in your life so that's what i'm seeing for you guys aries rising i hope that resonates and if it does please let me know by liking and commenting down below don't forget to subscribe and if you want an astrology reading definitely check me out at willsboom.com i offer tons of different types of readings um from relationship readings to individual readings to past life readings, which is not something I see all the time. So if you're interested in any of that or even a business reading, uh, definitely check that out. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Up next, we have Taurus rising. This Libra new moon is happening in your sixth house. And your chart ruler, Venus, is going to be loosely conjunct this new moon. So it may feel a little bit more impactful than usual. Um, as I've been mentioning with a lot of people, I do feel like this new moon in a lot of ways is about a sense of community. Um, but what's interesting is that the sixth house um, can tend to bring up uh, a little bit of harshness in relationships. Um, and it's usually because there may be an imbalance in a relationship 
where one person has more authority or more power over another person. Um, it can also be related to work relationships in particular, where you're kind of working together with someone to get something done. So both of these areas can have a highlight of a new beginning for you. So maybe you start working under somebody or you are having kind of a renewed dynamic going on in your existing work relationships. And so with the tower in reverse coming out along with the knight of pentacles, there may be something happening within workplace, within the workplace or workplace relationships that are undergoing some foundational shifts for you. Again, this is especially important because Venus is your chart ruler and it is very close to this new moon. And so the good thing about having the tower card and a new moon cycle is that whatever is falling away or kind of shifting is ultimately giving way to something better and brighter, more lively in, in essence. And so I feel like you guys are going to have some kind of new birthing opportunity within workplace and workplace relationships, um, or even in the way that you are showing up in service to others. So if you have clients, for example, those are people that you serve, or if you are caretaking, or if you are a stay at home mom, who are you serving? Um, and in many ways, there is going to be a shift in the routine of that. There's going to be a shift in the foundation of that and likely in the relationship, but it may also just be in the routine itself and the, in the way that you balance that routine. But again, I think most of us, it'll be something around the foundation of the relationship, what you have been investing a lot of time and energy into, um, into relationships that you are working either in service to or with. And so Again, I feel like it's something that with the Knight of Pentacles in reverse, you have been very consistent with, you have been very um, almost like stubborn with, like there's the same behavior day after day or the same type of situation going on day after day. And with the Tower in reverse and this in reverse, I'm getting the sense that it's finally starting to shift that, to change that energy, to be something that's more productive or more helpful for you. And I pulled the nine of pentacles as I say that when we look at Jupiter, which is opposing this new moon in the sixth house. Um, so Jupiter is in your 12th. There is a huge growth opportunity that can come from something that you may not be fully aware of yet. The 12th house is what's hidden. Um, Jupiter here is helping us grow in a way that's like um, basically either internal or or that is guided by spirit that's not very obvious all the time. And so you guys are going through a larger cycle of metamorphosis with Jupiter in the 12th that's helping you trust more in the foundations of life, which in turn helps you trust yourself more um, because it's almost like you can take more risks in life if you feel that life is here supporting you. If you feel like you are spiritually and mentally and emotionally sound, which is all in house in the 12th house, then you feel a lot more capable in going out and taking risks in the real world. And so I think that something is happening here where you're getting out of some kind of rut or repetitive cycle in an imbalanced relationship or someone that you are working with or in service to. And you are going to start to achieve something much more um, like strong for you, uh, much more foundational, much more comfortable to rest your feet on. And I feel like you guys are also going to be achieving a greater sense of empowerment because this new moon is also making a trine to Pluto in the ninth. And especially because Venus is an almost an exact trine with Pluto in the ninth. And again, Venus as your chart ruler is going to have a large impact on you and kind of where you're at in your life. So a trine from Pluto makes us feel like we can stand on our own, like we can stand up for what we believe in. And like we have a better idea of what we even are fighting for in our lives. And so it is, again, an empowering force that allows us to maybe take up more space, which hopefully with this new moon being in the sixth house can create a little bit more of a balance or positivity in your relationships within the workplace um, or within 
unequal relationships and everything that I mentioned before. But again, with the opposition with Jupiter in the 12th, there may be something that you have to let go of um, or surrender to in order for this to happen. And that's really what I see with the tower in reverse or any planet in the 12th house um, that there is oftentimes where we have to just trust and have faith that if we say no to something, if we uh, don't go to something, or if we somehow release something from our lives, we're actually going to benefit more. And especially because it is Jupiter, you will benefit more from allowing this dy this unequal dynamic or something along the terms of work relationships There's um, to not continue or to not invest in or to choose yourself. Um, or maybe to have some kind of balance of the two, because usually oppositions, there's a need to have both. But because I'm seeing the tower, I'm getting the sense that like something is leaving, that there's something washing away um, in regard to this relationship that is ultimately going to benefit you. Mercury and Venus are also opposite Neptune in the 11th house. So this can indicate sometimes having um, confusion in regards to relationships and communication. Um, Mercury and, and Venus are going to be in the fifth house for you guys. The fifth house? Yes, the fifth house. Um, and so essentially what I see with this is that there is going to be maybe some, again, kind of confusion around where you want to invest your energy. Um, the fifth and 11th house axis has a lot to do with short term versus long term um, choices, like how my current choice is going to affect me long term is versus is this spontaneous something I'm doing for my enjoyment right now. And so there may, this may come up within your relationships. Um, a, and this may be kind of confusing about what to do and what to address right now versus maybe what to wait out or what to kind of allow to have the bigger picture. Um, I pulled the nine of wands. So they're maybe a sense of exhaustion around a certain issue and not knowing if you can just kind of grin and bear it or if you should again like kind of try to address things right now and so neptune is um neptune is making it a little bit harder to either make that decision or if you do make that decision to even have that conversation and clarify things because Neptune is a confusing planet. So just know that if you go into something, um, while you are empowered, if you go into something and make a certain decision or want to have a conversation, it might be uh, not the best time because it can be a little bit confusing for both parties involved. So maybe just wait a little bit after you've made certain decisions um, or even wait to make the decision until at least early October. You guys also have Mars in the second house making an exact trine or almost exact trine to Saturn in your 10th. Very good time for working hard towards something foundational within your life. So this could be cultivating more stability, working on your finances, working on your long-term career goals. If you have a certain objective in life, like to buy a house, like really getting down to the nitty gritty of how to achieve that, taking steps forward, becoming more responsible in a lot of ways. Um, but again, Mars is also making a square to Neptune in the 11th house. So this is going to create this sense of confusion again or drain leakage of energy in this area of your life. So while you may make progress on your financial career goals, life objectives, with a square to Neptune in the 11th, you might be confused still about what your very long-term goals are. Or you might be confused about certain relationships and this can drain energy from you having enough drive at, in your career sector. Um, so it's just a little bit of a dampening kind of source or force um, and something that would usually be very driven. But regardless, I see with the Nine of Pentacles, you guys are creating something very solid for yourselves. This it can be a strong financial independence, a strong emotional independence, um, maybe again, kind of creating more balanced relationships where you're like, this is my power, I'm owning this, I'm protecting myself, that type of thing. Um, so there, I just getting the sense of you very much like standing on your own two feet and feeling abundant, but then also having relationships be a little bit of something that's you're having to work 
on and work through at this time. So we're all having relationships to work on at this time. So you're not alone. Um, so if that resonates, please let me know by liking and commenting down below. If you want astrology reading, check me out at willsboom.com. I offer a tons of different types of readings from relationship to career to past life and business readings as well. So I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Gemini risings. This Libra new moon is happening in your fifth house. And this is going to be good for romantic relationships if you are in a romantic relationship. Um, if not, it's still great for your social relationships and especially meeting new people. So if you are looking for a new partner, if you want to be dating somebody new, um, or if you just want to have new friends or even maybe new artistic interests, this is a really great time to pursue those things because a Libra new moon is about a new beginning and Libra is a sign of both beauty and relationships as is ruled by Venus. So this new moon is really loosely conjunct Mercury and Venus itself and they're all um, or the, the, the new moon is opposing Jupiter and Aries in your 11th house. So there may be ways in which you are having some different choices to make in regards to your friendship circles. Do you want to continue to invest in new people um, or do you want to invest in existing relationships? That might be a, a dynamic that comes to play. I just feel like in overall, you are looking for your soul family. I pulled the King of Cups, the Ten of Swords in Reverse, and the Ten of Pentacles and this gives me the energy of somebody who is very much emotionally in tune with what's going on inside of them and how other people are making them feel, especially because this moon is loosely trying Pluto in the eighth house. This is almost giving you like psychic energy or at the very least um, intuitive and psychological awareness and abilities to understand how people make you feel and the dynamics that are occurring within a dynamic dynamic within a relationship and so I think that's why I pulled the king of cups because it has this kind of emotional mastery or at least emotional awareness that I think you are bringing to your relationship front and then this is going to help you make decisions about what relationships are worth investing into or what changes you might need to make in a relationship but the ten of swords being in reverse does suggest a holding pattern or um, a resistance to making some of these changes and so you know I think that especially with Mercury and Venus kind of combined and Mercury being your chart ruler there may be a desire for just harmony and for not having to face conflict uh, for not having to disappoint or upset certain people um, and so many of you guys while maybe you see aspects of your relationships clearly and maybe there's parts of you that desires to address them. There's also a very strong part of you that just wants things to be easygoing um, and, and not rock the boat. And so I think that Ten of Swords in reverse is indicating, again, this resistance to having difficult conversations, having difficult situations arise, making difficult choices in regards to your relationship dynamics. Mercury, as as I mentioned, is your chart ruler, is also opposing Neptune. So Mercury Venus is opposing Neptune. So this can also create confusion within what you want to do. You may be highly sensitive to others' feelings. Um, Mercury and Virgo usually can be a little bit critical, but with Venus conjunct at opposite Neptune, I don't think that this comes out as being critical. I think this comes out as being very aware and very aware of how you affect others. And so this can lead you to kind of holding back or maybe playing victim or seeing the other person as a victim. So there's there's basically a lot of ways that this can play out, but it essentially is going to soften the energy of Mercury from being as objective as it normally would be. There is part of you that maybe wants to see the best in people or idealize a situation um, when in reality it might be more beneficial for you to allow yourself to uh, leave certain dynamics behind or not invest as much into some of them. Or you may have new people appear in your life that are adding great benefit to you that you feel like uh, that you might not see the full situation with at first. So it might not be 
everything you thought it was going to be, although that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it might be different than you expected. Um, But ultimately, what I feel like is you're just navigating a larger process of finding your people with these Ten of Pentacles, of finding your soul family, of finding your tribe. I don't know if it's even politically correct to say that anymore, but, you know, like the, the energy of being very aware of of how you feel emotionally after you are done hanging out with somebody or, you know, in the process of being with somebody and then using that emotional compass to understand what choices to make in your relationships and then solidifying those or, t- or removing some in order to find your your family um, and it's okay if that takes some time and if it's not super clear about what that means or who that is and all of that it everything can be very ambiguous with Neptune opposite Mercury and Venus but I think you are in process of this and it might take some more time uh, especially you know for the next Libra full moon um, which would be six months from now it might take the six month period to really get clarity on who you want by your side and who is really adding to your life Um, as I mentioned with Mercury and Venus trining Pluto in the eighth house I think that you guys are going to be extremely aware of what people bring out within you and if you may be also repeating familial patterns in your friendships or your relationships you know am I just kind of reliving my childhood in some ways or um, in a good way which can be like I'm helping you heal your childhood wounding or in a bad way where it's like this person just triggers you and is really not adding much to your life so that could be become very apparent as well Um, with Jupiter retrograde and Aries in the 11th house opposing this moon the idea of community and belonging is a little bit in contrast with this transit of Jupiter because Jupiter wants us to kind of go out on our own and forge our own path. And the 11th house does try to, while there is this individuality that can be there, there's also a conformity as well. And so it can kind of run in either direction. And so I think that Jupiter in in Aries in the 11th house is almost like taking leadership amongst a group of friends standing out and and being willing to be different amongst uh, a community of people that may be like-minded or homogenous in some some way and so again this is opposing this new moon in libra in the fifth house so there may be this desire to just have things go with the flow and be easygoing in the moment and then there might be this other part of you that wants to kind of stand up um you know stick your neck out in some way and be visible and be a little bit different than the group that you are currently a part of, if that's applicable for you. Um, Mars is in your first house right now. Very important video for you to watch is the Mars and Gemini video. This will be applicable until March of next year, so definitely watch that. But Mars in your first house might make you attract more arguments with people and might have you really need to actually step up as a leader in some ways or um, take risks and be willing to say something combative or be willing to, um, you know, I don't know, just like rub people the wrong way. And that doesn't mean that you should create enemies and like cause all this strife and just not have any self-control but it does imply with mars in your first house that there is a warrior spirit within you that does want to be activated this archetype wants to be reunited with you in some capacity and doing so with some semblance of control can be very beneficial to learn how to wield your yang ang- your anger <laughs> your anger your boundaries your drive your ambition your sexuality all of these things desire to be utilize as a tool and express strongly over this next however many months I think seven six six or seven months so um and when it goes retrograded around Halloween you're gonna really start to see way maybe where it has been where your Mars has been out of balance and where you maybe need to pull your energy back or reassess how you've done things Um, and then when it moves forward again you'll have more wisdom about how to embody this archetype of the warrior and so um this is part of your your seven month path and then mars is also making a trine to saturn in the ninth an almost exact trine so there is something about 
this warrior archetype that's asking you to forge ahead on what you believe is right. So there may be some sense of integrity or justice that you need to fight for. Um, there may be some sort of ideal or wisdom that you are defending within yourself or within your community, especially looking at Jupiter being in the 11th house in Aries, which is a sign ruled by Mars. So it's kind of connecting these topics together. Um, but there is something around like standing up for what you believe is right. That's very important here as well as you might have a lot more drive and ambition to learn and study new things as well as teach new things. So really stepping into your, you know, teacher role or student role at this time um, is going to benefit you. So if there is some kind of course that you've been looking for, this could be a great time. However, Mars is also squaring Neptune in the 10th. So there may be something about this where you're uncertain about how it's going to apply to your life to your long-term goals, to your career. Maybe you are interested in some studying something new or you have certain beliefs that you're willing to fight for, but you're uncertain about the outcome, the manifestation, or even how others will view you in the situation. But it doesn't really matter because you're still going to be driven to do those things anyway. But it is worthwhile to know that you may find that your energy is kind of leaking out a little bit um, or you might be just a little bit confused because of this square to Neptune. So... That is pretty much what I have for you guys. There is an encouragement to start something new, especially with Mars in your sign and before it goes retrograde around Halloween. So if you guys are interested in something, if there's a passion that's exciting you right now, do move towards that. Do try to invest and grow in that area of your life, especially if it's related to learning more about it or teaching more about it. Um, so don't hold yourself back, but also remember that square is up to the 10th. The answers are not all here yet, and that's okay too. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini Rising. If that resonates, please let me know by liking and commenting down below. I hope you have such a beautiful day. If you want an astrology reading, check me out, willsbloom.com, willowsbloom.com. I talk so fast at the end. I feel like no one can understand me. Um, but I offer so many different kinds of readings from individual life purpose readings to synastry or relationship readings, business readings, past life readings. If you're interested in any of that, definitely check me out, and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Cancer Risings. This new moon in Libra is happening in your fourth house of roots, foundation, home, family, and our childhood and our past and our ancestry and all those things. And it is loosely conjunct Mercury and Venus. So family relationships might be something that becomes really highlighted for you right now. Maybe you're going to go home and see some family members, or maybe you are going to improve the decorations within your home, stylistically wanting to, um, you know, kind of do a little bit of a makeover, add some new things into your life that make you feel more secure. And sometimes this can be financial as well. Like I'm going to start pursuing this one thing because I know it's going to add a greater sense of security and beauty into my life. Um because of the financial abundance. So those are all things that you may be going through right now. You also have Jupiter in your 10th house. And this is opposite. Jupiter retrograde in Aries is opposite this new moon in Libra. So there is maybe some um, conflicting energy here of wanting to have this beautiful new beginning within the home, wanting to focus on your relationship with family, um, wanting to cultivate your internal world or work on yourself emotionally, uplift yourself, um, caretake yourself. And then maybe another part of you with Jupiter in the 10th house that's driven for career success, that doesn't have time for those things, that wants to make a name for yourself, that has a certain life goal or an objective that it's trying to work on essentially and it doesn't have to just be career it can be any goal or objective in your life that's moving you forward um, in terms of something that'll be visibly out visible outside so people in society can tell like you got married or you got a new job or you know whatever you put on your resume or your life profile your autobiography this would be something that jupiter in the 10th house is trying to get you to put energy towards and pursue and so whenever I see an opposition, there is a conflict. There is, you know, maybe a desire for stability while also having a desire to wander and to explore and to do something different for in the name of progress. Um, and so this can feel sometimes a little bit 
um, yeah, it's just like something that you may feel that you need to balance. Um, and some, sometimes it's a little bit destabilizing to have an opposition occurring or wanting two different things because you don't always know in which direction you need to put your energy at any given time. This Libra new moon is also loosely making a trine to Pluto in the seventh house. So this can also have to do with your relationships as well. So where is my life going? What's going on in my household? What are going, what's going on in my relationships? Like all of these questions, which are really core questions could be coming up for you right now. Maybe it's time to, with this trying with Pluto, I think it gives us a lot of intuition and truth about what's going on in our relationship dynamics. And this might again be a direct, like, show directly within the home life so if you have roommates how are your relationships going with your roommates um is everything really going well if you have family for example is there what what is really going on with your relationship with your family it's like you're becoming much more in tune or aware with any of the shadows or any dynamics that have been occurring that could be good or bad. It's, it's not necessarily indicating one or the other, but it's going to make you, I think, much more aware of your existing relationships and the emotional undercurrents that are there. And so again, I do see you almost like wanting to invest more into your home life and your internal world and, and that, but then also part of you um, wanting to kind of bulldoze that and go straight into well, am I successful? What can I do to become more successful? Or what can I do to achieve this goal? Okay. Uh, Mercury and Venus are, again, loosely conjunct this moon. And they are making a trine to Pluto in the 7th and opposite Neptune in the ninth. So there may be ways in which you are idealizing something about a situation. So with the trine to Pluto in the 7th, you are being given clarity and truth in regards to relationships. But with Mercury and Venus opposite Neptune in the ninth. You might be um, either distorting this or you might be over optimistic about something or just you might not have the full truth or the full picture of a situation. It's either of a situation in regards to money or in regards to a relationship. So this is kind of broad. Um, let me see if I can think of an example. So let's say you are, um, you have a, you live with a family member and Pluto is making a trine to the new moon in the fourth house. There is something that comes out around this relationship that brings you closer together, but they don't disclose what real like the full truth of how they feel or what really happened. And so there are still some chips up in the air in some regards. So this is like a a specific example, but it can apply to really anything in your life. There's just something that you're not fully aware of with Neptune the ninth that you might be really reaching for the stars and very optimistic and starry eyed about. So like, I'm going to start this business and make tons of money and it's going to be my way out. And like, the reality is that you will make progress. Um, but maybe you won't make as much money as quickly as you think something like this. So, um, usually it's going to be in regards to money relationships because we have Venus involved or something around communication and commerce because Mercury is involved. So just something to keep in mind. You guys also have Mars in the 12th making a trine to Saturn in the 8th house. So I did pull the tower card and I am seeing something here around needing to have some type of release. And so this is going to be somehow involved in whatever situation you're not able to see clearly. So, and the reason why is because Mars in the 12th is also squaring Neptune in the 9th, which Neptune in the 9th is the cause of this idealism or this confusion or not seeing something clearly, kind of being like overly optimistic about something. So whatever it is that you're not fully seeing, it's, I think it's ultimately going to come to a head in some fashion where you are going to have to own up to something or you are going to have to um, make a change or change is going to happen with Mars trining Saturn in the 8th, Mars and 12th trining Saturn in the 8th. Both of these are houses associated with letting go, um, of purging, of loss. And so I think that there's something that you might have to um, 
let go of. <laughs> and with the square to Neptune in the ninth, it could be related to that specific situation. Like um, you start to see something more clearly and so you have to let go as a result. Or there may be something kind of unrelated that you have to transition out of and into something new. And with this square to Neptune in the ninth, you can be um, – on one hand, idealistic with Mercury and Venus opposite Neptune, but with Mars squaring Neptune, you might lack confidence at the same time. There might be part of you that feels uncertain or insecure about this transition or this change. Um, and so there may be like a deeper truth that you are facing in that sense of of feelings of inadequacy or um, just not feeling like you're ready. And so, yeah, this is kind of like a really obscure, I feel like abstract message, but I hope it is applying to you and making sense for you. But there's just something that you're not fully seeing clearly about the path ahead that you might be idealizing or optimistic about. And there may be something else or that same thing that you're having to transition out of or release or something. Um, but I do see this ultimately bringing you a lot more happiness. I got the nine of cups, the three of cups, the world. So I'm getting the sense that you're finding a community that that really suits you um this might not be right away but this might be like what's happening long term um i see you guys transitioning out of a chapter of your life and completing something and moving into something that's going to bring you actually more emotional fulfillment um so whether this is within your family relationships whether this is with your, your friend community um you know, it can be so many different things. I don't want to give specifics. So, but I definitely feel like you guys are transitioning out of something that has been consistent for you. And this is going to allow you to find something that is going to bring more happiness. But again, you don't want to be overly optimistic. Um, and you also don't want to be in, like too insecure or discouraged. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like this, I mean, not sorry, but I do feel like this message is a little bit all over the place and I do hope it makes sense. So I'm just going to wrap that up here before I start babbling on. Um, if you want a reading from me, I promise it'll be a lot more straightforward since it's not applying to everyone. You can check those out at willisboom.com. I offer all different types of readings from business readings to individual life purpose, relationship readings, and more. So definitely check me out. I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Leo Risings. This Libra new moon is happening in your third house of community. And it's funny because one of the first cards that I pulled was the Three of Cups, which also has to do with your friends and the people that you just enjoy spending time with. The, the, the third house is not necessarily all about friendships, but it does have to do with the way that we interact with our environment. So the people that are around us often, the siblings that we have, the neighborhood that we navigate, the local stores that we shop at, the gyms that we go to, it's your ability to kind of plug into your environment and interact with it, as I said. So you're having a new beginning here. And so oftentimes when I see a new beginning in the third house, I get this feeling that you might be taking on something new because this is all about movement and interaction and that has a lot to do with stimulation. It is a house naturally ruled by Gemini and Mercury. And so um, I do get the feeling that you may kind of find new relationships in your environment um, or you might find new things to do with new people. Um, and yeah, I'm just getting with, with, a, with a new moon, there's just a sense of taking on something else or doing something new or different. And um, it can be maybe a little bit stimulating because this moon is also loosely conjunct Mercury and Virgo. And so you may have um, just kind of more going on in your mind, especially around relationships, around money, around how to talk to people about certain things, how to execute certain things, how to um, go about how to go about business or marketing, getting your name out there. These are all things that you might be starting to deal with. So there is like a little bit of this commonality with 11th house around networking and getting, getting like promoting yourself in some way. This can be online. This can be in your, in your local community. Um, so this might be applicable to some of you guys. This new moon is opposite Jupiter in Aries in the ninth house. Jupiter is retrograde right now. So there is a larger 
soul mission that you are going through where you are on like a hero's journey to discover what your life principles are, what you fully believe in, what is possible for you, what you want to manifest, what you are exceptional at, how you can bring that out to the world. The ninth house has this very adventurous and uplifting energy to it. And Jupiter here especially is asking you to learn so much about yourself in order to expand who you are and again bring this out into the world the ninth house also has to do with disseminating wisdom sharing your knowledge from lifetimes innate and otherwise and so jupiter moving through here is helping activate this innate wisdom the third house is about accumulation so the ninth house is also about learning and things of that nature um but it's more so from it more so is like learning with boundaries with an existing idea or like going further into specialization because you already know you like something the third house is porous the third house is open-minded open-ended a sentence that has no punctuation and so it's willing to bump around its environment and take everything in and it hasn't necessarily learned the art of discernment or deciphering exactly what information is coming in and so that's where the ninth house does. It will synthesize what's happening within the third house. So this new moon has an opposition here with the ninth and the third house. Jupiter wants you to grow in a stance. It wants you to understand how what you are learning from your environment and from those around you is forming who you are and what you believe in, either by contrast or by agreement. And so I think that this might come up at this time. You might start to notice how other people operate and live within your community, within your workplace, within your surroundings, um, and you might agree with some of what they do. You might really learn and study from them and almost like take it as a mentorship. And there are ways that you might disagree and you might have your own level of discernment where you see how you wouldn't necessarily operate things in that same way or how, yeah, you would just live your life differently or you have different integrity, different morals or different, you know, goals and concepts for what you want the world to be like or what you want your life to be like in the future. And so I feel like you're really using your relationships as kind of like a study area. Um, and, but because this is an opposition, there might be a little bit of friction there where sometimes that disagreement can be uncomfortable or that way of seeing life differently can cause um, difficult decisions or put, put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Um, and so that's just something to keep in mind. There's part of you that wants to grow larger and maybe there are ways in which the current reality or current environment, the current people you're around are not necessarily growing in that same way or doing that same thing or believing the same thing you do. This new moon is also loosely conjunct Pluto in the sixth house. So again, I think this is largely going to be related to work because wherever Pluto is making this trine is going to give us information about um, more truth or like what's really going on in a situation. And so I do think that many of you will discover differences in work relationships and how you handle certain tasks, certain responsibilities. This doesn't have to be within the workplace. It could be within the home. Like maybe you delegate, you live with roommates, maybe you delegate different chores to different people and the way that you do those chores, the way that you view the importance of those chores differs and you have to kind of figure out how to work in that environment and still have your unique belief system. This could be within the workplace working under a boss and they have a, a certain way of navigating that you may have different goals or different ways of that you would operate the business or something like this so we're all going to kind of see how this fits together but there is a sense of truth coming out within workplace relationships responsible dynamics um in the ways that you are kind of in service to others so there's some truth coming out about how you might do be of service in different ways than the people around you Mercury and Venus, which are loosely conjunct this moon, are also is also trining Pluto in the sixth. So I think that this can give you, again, a lot of awareness around relationships and finances um, that I was just mentioning. But it's also opposite Neptune in the eighth. So there's something here, um, especially around power and control, where there is an unknown factor. So like, let's say you have a different idea of what you think should be done than your boss. 
and you kind of want to say something, but because you have Jupiter in the ninth house, you want to grow, you want to stand up, you want to have your own systems of beliefs, your own thing, integrity that you're following. But with this Mercury and Venus opposite Neptune, the eighth, it's like you're not really sure how it will be received or where you stand in this relationship and how um, how much your opinion matters versus doesn't matter, how much you can share without this becoming like uh, overly vulnerable or in the wrong place or um, so there is there is something going on where there can be some confusion it can also be around finances as well so maybe you know if I invest in this area is that really going to be something I can trust is that going to be something that's going to work out for me in the long run if we share finances if we go in on something together is that going to be a positive thing or is that not going to be it's confusing. How do we sign this contract? So it's really not the best time to make very deliberate decisions about um, like contractual stuff and, and financial matters with this with this placement. You guys also have Mars in the 11th house and it's trining Saturn in the 7th house. So you guys are becoming very dedicated to relationships at this time. You are investing into your current community, um, into your existing friendships, and you're solidifying them. And yes, making progress or headway in this area of your life. However, Mars is also squaring Neptune in the 8th house. So these power dynamics and being uncertain of like what to do and when, who to trust and when, um, who again, who has the control, who doesn't, that might come up within your friendships as well. And so that can be kind of confusing. Um, so just know that, that 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 might influence or like leak some energy out of those that solidifying that you're doing in your current relationships. I also pulled the Ten of Swords in reverse and Eight of Pentacles upright. So for many of you, you may be like doing it all in some senses. And sometimes that might be the truth that you see with Pluto in the Six trying this moon. You might see how much you're responsible for and how it's not necessarily fair or even because Pluto in the Sixth House does indicate, again, these imbalances of power and responsibility. And so... Um, this could indicate that you're taking on a lot of work and maybe a little bit too much on your shoulders in particular. And this is a new moon in your third house. So it's like you're very aware of how busy you are and you might even have more stuff come onto your plate and it might become quite burdensome. And so with the eight of pentacles and with the 10 of wands in reverse, I think it is suggesting a need to delegate or balance the power in some way so that you are not taking on all of the responsibility for yourself. So that is the last message I have for you, Leah Rising. I hope that it resonates. If it does, please like and comment down below. If you want astrology reading, check them out at willsboom.com. I have individual life purpose readings, relationship readings, which are also called synastry readings. I have business readings, which is unique. I don't see that many people offering that. And I have past life readings, which is also not super common. So definitely check me out and I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye. All right, up next we have my fellow Virgo risings. This Libra new moon is happening in your second house of finances, loosely conjunct Mercury and Venus. So this could be good for your financial future. Um, a new moon in the second house is always kind of exciting because there is usually a new avenue or new way for you to make money. However, I did pull a lot of cards that have to do with very much an internal dialogue. So for many of you, while this could manifest externally as that, may also manifest as an internal shift in your level of confidence. And I say that especially because this new moon is also opposing Jupiter in the eighth house. So this is where we get often very psychological. Um, sometimes it can be literal. For example, if you got, if you're dealing with money, that is other people's money, like inheritance or even investments, um, your partner's money, all of these things could come up and there can be a little bit of this battle between like, okay, um, here's this new avenue of money that I'm creating for myself and then should I put it towards my finances with my partner? Should I share it? Should I invest it? Or um, – Maybe you get money from that area of your life and you're unsure about how to make it yours. There's like the, an opposition between what is theirs, what is mine? How do I manage this? So that's like the more literal surface sense of this. But I do see that there is something profoundly emotional going on inside around this new moon. And so the second house is a house of accumulation of possessions. Because what, do, what does having money make people feel? Why do people say they want money for? 
security. And what is security? Security is confidence that you are going to be okay. And so this can manifest on the very physical mundane level, or it can manifest internally, emotionally as feeling like you have uh, the inner strength, the inner stability, and the inner confidence and courage and strength, as I already mentioned, (laughs) to remain confident and unwavering, despite really challenging things happening in your life. So that is what a new moon in the second house can give you. It can give you the ability to develop this inner sense of security. With Jupiter retrograde in Aries in the eighth house, there is another pull for you to dive deeper into your shadows. So the new moon in the second house might want you to accumulate. It might want you to hold on to things or to stay safe by having these things near you. Um, by making money, by doing X, Y, Z for yourself. And I'm not saying not to do that because it is a new moon in the second house. So there is this energy there for you to have that in your life, to have that new beginning or to accumulate or whatever. But Jupiter in the eighth house also wants you to take risks. So it wants you to maybe not rely so much on the things that you accumulate. It wants you to put emotional risk in a relationship. It wants you to maybe have difficult conversations or step into a crisis and understand that you can have the strength to navigate that crisis. You don't have to have all of your stuff with you or all of your whatever um, in order to feel good and go out into the world and make an impact and be your true self. So there is this kind of rawness that the eighth house has and this self-protectiveness that the second house has and the eighth house can also be self-protective but because we're talking about Jupiter here in the sign of Aries it's more so you venturing forward into the unknown or the risk factor that is emotional and sometimes for some of you it might be financial Um, and so that might be like a little bit of a scary process but it's funny because it is an opposition and so it's asking you to do a little bit of both. It's asking you to take this risk while also becoming more solid in yourself and more confident in yourself. And so some of you may have to have confronting and uncomfortable conversations around this time in order to become more established and more in love with yourself because you are addressing things head on um, instead of maybe patting yourself up, you know, like second house can do. Um This Libra new moon is also loosely trining Pluto in the fifth house. So I think that this will give you some really powerful insights into your relationships. And I think it will help you find um, your like inner gifts and your inner uniqueness and your inner light and help you shine that forward to become more confident. So it's not only that you're addressing these conversations that you're addressing these insecurities that you're facing a crisis or whatever it is that Jupiter and Aries kind of wants you to do but with Pluto in the fifth house you're also um, really starting to honor what is unique about you and doing both of those things helps you gain confidence which is what this new moon in the second house is trying to give you if this is talking about surface level things if this is financial maybe you are kind of addressing like what should I spend versus save and sometimes Pluto in the fifth house um, can make us see a little bit more clearly about our spending habits and our indulgences and where we are investing our money versus kind of wasting our money Um, and it can give you again more clarity and more truth about this area of your life so that you can kind of get your financial situation a little bit more in check. As I mentioned, Mercury and Venus are loosely conjunct this new moon, and they're also trining Pluto in the fifth. So again, I think it's just more of what I just shared. And they're also opposing Neptune in the seventh. So there may be ways in which you are unclear about certain elements of relationships, unclear about how to communicate something, or you might be clear about how you want to communicate, but it's not coming across that well. Maybe you're unsure about how a certain relationship will develop in the future or what you really want out of something. Um, And so this can be a little bit challenging because while we're gaining awareness in a lot of senses around ourselves and vulnerability and moving into crisis or our money habits, whatever, whatever it is that applies to you, we are also kind of feeling 
a little bit out of it in our relationship sector. And so there may be one particular person or maybe across the board group of people that you're just a little bit uncertain about or you're having a conversation and it's like not coming across as you would like. Um, so just be very mindful of that and be aware of signing contracts with new people because of this. You also have Mars in the 10th house, very career driven. I've talked about this a lot. Watch the Mars and Gemini video because it's applicable until March of next year. But Mars in your 10th house is going to make you very, again, career driven. So um, this is definitely the time to be outputting and, and energized in your career. And it's making an almost exact trine with Saturn in the 6th house. So you are becoming disciplined in your routine, in your work. You're, again, becoming more productive. And I think that this is really going to benefit you. However, Mars is also making a square to Saturn in the seventh. So there may be ways in which you don't understand how relationships fit into your future goals and to your career. There may be ways in which you don't understand how or you're leaking energy into these this confusing part of your relationships and it's kind of taking away from your career drive. So just be mindful of kind of how everything is going in that direction. Um, but again, I do kind of see this conflict and needing to face things head on with the page of pentacles and five of wands i think this is reminding me that jupiter and aries like there's something that that your soul wants you to face in order with with a new moon and second house to establish more security so don't protect yourself too much but maybe know how much to keep reserved and how much to like address or bring up or talk about um that's a huge thing here i also have the strength the seven of swords in reverse Strength in reverse, seven of swords in reverse, nine of swords in reverse. So I think many of you guys are in the process of um, confronting and dealing with your own personal feel fears and insecurities. I think many of you are um, finding your inner strength but also experiencing self-doubt. Many of you are trying to overcome ways in which you might lie to yourself and you might even be lying to yourself at this new moon because Mercury is your ruling planet and it's opposing Neptune. So you might really not see things clearly about yourself and your internal world and your situation. So um, be gentle with yourself because this can be a little bit of a weird transit for Virgo risings. Um, so there may be ways in which you are self-deceiving. And with the Nine of Swords in reverse, it's time to release these fears that are not substantiated. Um, I think that you guys, basically all these cards are really showing this holding pattern of holding on to fears and traumas and uncertainties um, and maybe lying to yourself to kind of subvert dealing with them. Um, so I think this is a lot about addressing these things head on. And again, with Mercury opposite Neptune, it, you might not have full clarity about the situation or about how it's going to unfold or about many things in your life, especially relationships. But the important thing here is that you are um, – you are dealing with things anyway, and you are allowing them to unfold in their own time. So I hope that makes sense. I do kind of feel like some of my explanations today are quite abstract. So if it does make sense, please let me know by commenting down below. I love and read all of your comments. And if you want astrology reading, check me out at willowsboom.com. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Up next, we have my beautiful Libra risings. That means that this new moon in Libra is happening in your first house. I love when I see that because I know that you're going to feel this um, and it might be something that feels like it's opening up a new part of you, a new beginning for you. Um, anything in the first house, the first house in astrology is where we are born essentially, like our first years of life and our birthing process on the ascendant. And so whenever there's a new moon here, it's like, again, a new part of you is born or unlocked or awakened or understood. Um, and I just, I, I really love it. So this new moon is loosely conjunct your chart ruler, which is Venus as well as Mercury. And it is opposing Jupiter and Aries in the second house, seventh house. So there may be ways in which there is this conflict of, myself versus others and you are in particular really growing in your area of relationships and relating and understanding and maybe if you have clients clientele like one-on-one -on -one clientele you're really starting to expand in this area of your life but you're also having a new beginning that is very personal and how 
maybe also how others see you or your different ways of looking or behaving. And so there is this contrast here of a focus on your relationship with others and, and growing and developing that versus this new beginning within yourself. And so an opposition is essentially about bringing the two sides together, allowing them to both exist. So there may be ways in which they are currently um, pulling your energy apart. And it's it's like about finding that balance or a way to bring the energy together. And so... Yeah, that might not be that might not be super apparent for your life, but I think when the new moon does come out, you'll start to see how what I'm saying applies to you. This new moon is also making a trine to Pluto in the fourth house. So this is going to bring up a lot of emotions. With Pluto in the fourth, we are stirring up truths often from the recesses of our mind or from our childhood or from our past uh, where we are just becoming much more aware of how we operate and function. And this might then directly inform your relationships. And so that's how the opposition could come into play. But again, it's an opposition. So there's a conflict here. It's like, okay, I'm spotting this new part of myself. I understand how I'm working. I'm having this new awareness, this new birthing. And now I'm going to go take this into my relationships and then my relationship isn't responding or it's like the person isn't quite growing in the same way or you're trying to grow and it's um, it's just not necessarily totally always conducive. So that's just an example, but this can manifest in many, many different ways depending on your chart. But I do think you guys are becoming very aware of your own psychological functioning, your own emotional processing, how you use your energy, where your energy is dissipated or um, enhanced. And it's very relational as well. So it's like, do I feel good around this person? How, what does this person trigger in me? Do I feel more energized around this person? And do I feel like depleted around them? Um, Mercury and Venus, as I mentioned, are loosely conjunct this new moon. Venus is making an almost exact trine to Pluto in the fourth. So this is very, again, transformative for understanding yourself on a deeper level and empowering yourself through that understanding. So because I'm aware of my emotions and my habits and my processes, I'm able to then make different choices. It's the awareness that feels extremely empowering. However, Mercury and Venus are also opposing Neptune in the sixth house. So there can be some confusion here as well. Um, and what's confusing about this is that Neptune can make us idealize something or cloud our vision about what is going on. And being in the sixth house, this could relate to our health. This could relate to our routines. And so it may be harder to kind of grasp onto something really solid about our everyday life. It could also be related to our work. So you might be more confused about kind of where you want to take something in terms of work directions, or you might be really um, just lacking energy physically as well. But there is a sense that you are trying to maybe build upon something and you don't always have the next clear step. And especially right now, um, you might feel very particularly confused. Like you're having a lot of emotional insights, a lot of self-awareness. You're having a new beginning in your life in some way. But it's it might not be clear about how to really ground it into your daily routine, how to bring it out in your daily life. Um, and that might be that might be a little bit harder. Um, you guys also have Mars in the ninth house making an almost exact trying to Saturn in the fifth. So this is really beautiful for being optimistic and for being very driven to learn about new things or to put yourself out there and maybe teach others about the things that you know. And with the trying to, to Saturn in the, to the fifth house, it's allowing you to express certain parts of yourself that maybe you have restricted in some ways or maybe you haven't fully allowed yourself to develop. So maybe you've always had a certain interest in something or a certain hobby and now you're finally able to put more time and learn about it or teach about it and express it in some way. I think that's going to feel really good. But Mars is also making a square to Saturn in the sixth house. And this can also 
kind of drain a little bit of your energy. Maybe there's part of you that wants to apply it to your work or a very practical way and you're not sure how you're going to do that. Um, so maybe like you have this new skill that you want to learn and develop, but you're not really sure how it's going to play out in everyday life. Um, so there may be just ways in which you are optimistic, but also uncertain because Mars square Neptune can reduce our confidence a little bit, especially when it comes to practical matters. So it's like, oh, I'm inspired by this. I'm doing this. I'm excited. I'm driven. But then when it comes to all the practical applications of things, you might be wavering and less confident. So overall, I pulled the Page of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Page of Swords. These are all indicators of new beginnings, new ways of looking at things, investing in something further, growing growing something. The Seven of Pentacles also has a baby on it, which I feel like has a lot to do with the birthing analogy. Like there's new parts of you that are being born. Um, so it feels very exciting, but can also be, again, quite confusing because Venus is your chart ruler and it's opposing Neptune. So you might have all these new beginnings, but you're not quite sure how it's going to land, how it's going to play out, what to do with it. And that's okay. So sometimes these, t these things take some time to unfold. And yeah, it's going to be really beautiful for you guys. This is an optimistic new moon and I'm excited for you. So if that resonates, please let me know by liking, commenting down below. If you want astrology reading, check me out at willsboom.com and I hope you have a great day. Bye. And up next, we have my beautiful Scorpio risings. So for you guys, this Libra new moon is happening in your 12th house, which is associated with endings and passing on into your next lifetime as a soul. And it's ironic because I pulled as my first card, the 10 of swords, which has that same exact meaning in tarot. So there is a definitive ending here, and I tried to specify what is this ending because it is a Libra new moon, which is generally about new beginnings, especially in the area of relationships, um, as even more so because Venus is loosely conjunct this moon, Mercury is there as well, but there is a lot of, I think for many of us, hard conversations, not hard conversations, but conversations, realizations, and um I think breakthroughs in our ways of relating and understanding. But since it's in the 12th house for you, there is a hard stop. There is an ending to one way of relating to somebody. And I pulled the Hierophant card to describe what is it that you're stopping. And the Hierophant card has a lot to do with these pre-existing set of beliefs. Um, and it's interesting because it's the masculine version of the High Priestess. And the High Priestess is a card I also pulled. And so I think that you guys are moving from this more masculine way or structured, predefined uh, way of believing about relationships or way of relating to people to a much more intuitive, psychic, um, aware of your own subconscious and patterns. And you're moving into relationships that feel a little bit more intentional and like sensitive and free flowing. And so there's something about the Hierophant that feels like it is defined and structured in a way that I think wasn't suiting you. And so this is going to apply to everyone in a different way, but it's almost like it's breaking down the boxes or the walls or the definitions, as I mentioned, um, of relationships and how you show up for people, um, what you believe about partnerships. All of those things are starting to be broken down and disintegrated into something that feels more personalized to you, more, again, intuitive, and what feels right in the moment versus what feels wrong. And so this feels less reactionary. Um, it also feels less strict. And so um, I think many of you guys are going to start to show up in a new way in relationships that is going to be able to meet your needs a lot easier because you're going to be a lot more in touch with your subconscious, with your emotions, with underlying patterns and things that are going on um, and those deep core needs that you have as a soul. So it's like you're coming from relationships more as an intuitive feminine soul rather than an earthly defined masculine kind of structure, if that makes sense. This moon is also opposing Jupiter in the sixth house. So there is also this question of um, okay. So first of all, there is this, there is a question around like independence versus 
working with others or even being underneath somebody. So some of for some of you, this may came, come up. Um, and this could even have to do with like literally work. And this somehow has to do with work and your relationships and them being a little bit at odds or not being comfortably put together in the way that you would like in your life. Um, so that's the more like literal way. But the sixth house can also represent where we are um, a little bit reliant on others, not in an emotional way, but in a physical way. So I have a job and I have a boss and I'm reliant on my boss to tell me what to do, to give me a paycheck. There is a little bit of a hierarchy there. Um, and with Jupiter moving through Aries in the sixth house, there's a desire for a sense of independence. And this may conflict with maybe some reliance, physical reliance going on within the relationship. And the nine of pentacles and the two of swords can indicate this. Like, do, do I want to make a different decision to become more independent and to essentially like work for myself in some capacity and not be reliant on this person at all and this could be even basic things it doesn't have to be financially it could be like in your partnership or with a friend that you're reliant on others for achieving something or um like you need you just need help essentially and this is saying like maybe i need to make a decision around if i want to be independent and kind of do it on my own or with the seven of pentacles, do I want to create something together? Do I want to approach this almost as like a family dynamic or um, a close friend dynamic where I'm allowing myself to build something with them? Like you can see these two parents here are caring for a child. They're creating something and they're both extremely necessary. And without one of those people, you would really feel the lack of them. And so I do get this sense of like needing to make a decision with the two of swords and the nine of pentacles around your independence versus self versus reliance. And this could also be a job as well. Like, okay, I want to kind of work for myself. Maybe I need to have an ending in these, in these relationships, um, in my workplace. And so it can be on that level. It can be on a romantic level. It can basically take a lot of different forms. This new moon is also loosely trining Pluto in your third house. So there's something here where you're discovering your own innate power and your own power also of persuasion and of using your words essentially to kind of get down to like the, the brass tacks or like get down to the nitty gritty of what's really going on in a situation to understand people, um, to convince people of things. There's, there's this way that you are using your intuition with your ability to talk to people that you're able to kind of get a lot of juice out of a certain situation. And it's going to look different for everyone, but I hope that does make sense. Um, Mercury and Venus, as I mentioned, are loosely conjunct this moon. They're also making a trine to Pluto. Venus is making an exact trine to Pluto. So I do think many of you are having important conversations in your relationships. And again, because you're so intuitive and psychologically aware at this time, those conversations are really like honest. They're really truthful. And if they're not, you're able to see right through it in a way that that person can't hide. And this could be in any kind of relationship, but it's going to bring about the truth. However, we also have Neptune and Mercury or Neptune in the fifth house opposing Mercury and Venus. So there is a little bit of confusion and deception that can come from this placement. So we have Pluto revealing some sort of truth to us, even if it's just our own understanding. And then Neptune confusing that truth or another part of the conversation or another aspect of our life it doesn't have to be that same thing but there is something being confused with Neptune here and being in the fifth house it's a lot around our sense of playfulness and fun and sexuality and creativity we might be kind of confused about that area of our life um, and how this shows up especially within our relationships because it is opposing Venus and Mercury and so you may have to have confusion um, conversations, important conversations, but there might not be full resolution or there could be some confusion again around those topics and around children as well. If you have children with somebody, if you're making a decision about 
something around children, there can be kind of confusion around that too. So just wait until October to make really important decisions. You guys also have Mars, which is your traditional ruler in the eighth house, making a trine, an exact trine to Saturn in the fourth. You're working very hard right now. You're being very diligent, routined, motivated, disciplined. Um, so overall, I can see you guys putting in a lot of effort. But again, Mars is making the square to Neptune in the fifth. So there is some confusion. I think that's why I'm getting this like two swords card where you're having to make a decision. There's some kind of confusion around what to do. And I feel like it, it again has to do with those topics related more so to children or to passion or to your sexuality, to, to your interests, your hobbies, your unique talents and gifts. It's like, okay, how do I work really hard at the things that I want to create stability with Saturn in the fourth house to create stability within my home, but also express myself creatively or also have time for the children or whatever that is. And Mars squaring Neptune can make that confusing. And it can also make your energy dissipate a little bit. So whereas you're really driven and you're disciplined, you would have more energy if Mars was just trining Saturn and not squaring Neptune. So that's essentially what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. If that resonates, please let me know by liking and commenting down below. I hope you have a beautiful day. Don't forget to check out my challenge starting October 8th, and I'll see you then. Bye. All right, up next, we have my beautiful Sagittarius rising. So for you guys, this Libra new moon is happening in your 11th house of friendships and community, and it is loosely conjunct Venus and Mercury in the sign of Virgo, and it is opposing Jupiter, which is your chart ruler, your ruling planet in the fifth house. Jupiter is also retrograde in the sign of Aries. Okay. So I do feel like you guys are having this new beginning in your community. So maybe you guys are moving somewhere new or meeting new friends or joining new groups. Um, and you're just kind of getting yourself out there a little bit more. There's always going to be a sense of networking or the 11th house is really great as well because 11th and the 5th house are really great because they're houses that increase with time. So these are both houses that it's like, okay, I if I have a positive planet here like Jupiter in the 5th, the investments that I'm making right now can pay off long term. Um, things can kind of come full circle for me rather than just not working out. Um, and the 11th house is also really beneficial for receiving help from outside sources like benefactors, friends in higher places, maybe even family members. And so you guys have... Uh, a basically a good, these are good houses to have a new beginning in. Um, but with the Jupiter in the fifth, there can be a little bit of an energy pull away from your community. Jupiter in the fifth wants to create something um, very specifically f for you. Um, it has something to do with your own unique gifts. The fifth house is where we basically manifest ourselves externally so I have a unique gift as an astrologer or as a writer or whatever that is and it's me cultivating that and bringing it to life for the world to enjoy and it really does feel like a part of me an extension of me and so I think many of you guys are working on something right now a hobby an interest creating something in your life that you're really excited about that feels like it's an expression of who you are and this interest is going to ultimately take more energy away from you being able to have this new beginning out in the community. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have that new beginning. It just means that they, they are conflicting and it's more so about bringing balance to the situation whenever possible. Jupiter in the fifth house can also be extremely indulgent <laughs> And so there may be part of you that wants to kind of do what you want to do in the moment. And then the 11th house new moon is asking you to maybe think long term. And because it's a Libra new moon, it's also thinking long term about how this will impact others. So not even just myself, but how is this decision going to affect my partner, my future kids, my friends, or my future friends or my family, you know, the people around you that are affected by your decisions. And so there is, again, this question of what do I want to do for me in the moment? 
and just enjoy myself versus what do I want to do long term for others, for my community um, to create that sense of belonging and to think again in this long term way. And so those are really big questions that I think you may be considering right now. And I pulled the Six of Swords and the Four of Cups for you. So I think many of you may be going through some sort of transition in this time of life. The Six of Swords is giving me energy around um, being quite busy. And that makes a lot of sense with something I'm going to talk about later with Saturn in your third house. But there is a sense of taking on maybe more responsibility and just having more tasks to do as a result. Or maybe you're traveling a lot and you have fun stuff coming up, but there is a sense of like being a little bit ungrounded and not in a way that you're not excited, but just, um, or unwell, but just in a way that you have a lot on your plate and you're maybe not in a fixed location you're not grounded into a certain place. And so that's what the six of swords is giving me. And then the four of cups is usually some kind of dissatisfaction, which is interesting. Um, and what I'm getting from this is is it's usually like a rejection of something. Um, so maybe some of you have so many like opportunities that you have to um, say no to some of them or you have so many things that you want to do that you have to say no to some of them. And the Four of Cups, I think, is kind of giving me that energy of, you know, what do you really, really want and I think that is where you're going to have to put your focus and your direction and your energy. I'm going to have to stay strong and commit and not waver from this path because Jupiter in the fifth house can be a little bit like, let me go here, let me go there. And that interests me. And I'm just going to follow my passions today. And so you can get a little bit sidetracked from those long-term goals. And so I think the universe really wants you to hone in on your desire for something stable and secure long term and make important decisions um, in order to pursue that while also balancing your passions today. And I say that because the Libra new moon is also trining Pluto in the second house. So there's a lot of questions around finances, a lot of questions around assets. You know, do I want to own this home? What choices do I have to make about not going out to eat or not buying that light fixture to be able to afford you know, what I want, but in a realistic fashion. Um, and so those are going to be some big kind of adultish questions you could see yourself. You, I could see you asking yourself. Um, those That's just a specific example, but it's going to be true for everyone in your own way where you're really having to mind your financial future and um, having awareness around this is going to ultimately make you a lot happier because it's going to give you what you want and I do see you getting what you want I pulled the ten of cups and the star these are some of the most emotionally fulfilling uplifting cards of the entire tarot deck the ten of cups is about having a family a support system about having a home feeling so emotionally fulfilled that you have your cup running over and the star is this card of healing of hope of happiness of believing that only good things are coming to you next. And so I feel like you guys are moving into this state of bliss and a lot of emotional fulfillment if you can make sure that you focus on your long-term goals as well as focus on your sense of belonging to wherever you are, wherever community you want to be in. Uh, Mercury and Venus, I mentioned, are loosely conjunct this moon, making um, and trying to Pluto. In the second, so I think that's what I was saying about really creating these solid foundations of friendships and investing in these people um, that you encounter. And you know, people are kind of like assets in a way. I, I don't. I hate to say that. Like that sounds kind of. I don't think that, and I do. Um, I don't think I don't like comparing people to commodities, but they're they are like assets in the way that they really bring a lot of security and happiness and fulfillment and wholeness to our lives um, and so without this sense of community okay anyway you guys already know mercury and venus however are also opposite neptune in the fourth so there may be some confusion around your home or your family with this kind of placement and um this may have to do with the you know these new relationships and everything like that like let's say for example you don't know where you're going to live but you're trying to make a community that would be an example, um, but this can come across in any way. 
But there, with Neptune the fourth opposite Mercury and Venus, there's con confusion. Like maybe there's something going on with family that's confusing. You're trying to have conversations. You're trying to see eye to eye, but it's like not everyone does, or you just don't know where you're going to end up. Um, there is like an, a process of unfolding here that's unclear. And so having really important conversations or making really important decisions around your physical home or something with family members or even financial decisions are all going to be like, this is not the time for that. So just kind of hold off if you are trying to pursue something like that. Lastly, you guys have Mars in your seventh house, making a trine to Saturn in the third. This is where I see a lot of this commitment coming in. Saturn in the third is, again, it can be quite busy. Um, Saturn in like the third and the sixth and the tenth house can lead you to having a lot of responsibility outside in your day-to-day -day life. And with the trine to Mars in the, in the seventh, I feel like you guys are maybe committing with a partner to do something um, or with a friend to do something. There's something where you're getting involved with somebody else and trying to commit to being active and doing something together um, or at the very least having like really solidifying and important conversations. And so this is really good. This is very energizing, very disciplined. However, Mars is also opposing Neptune in the fourth. So this can get a little bit, or sorry, squaring Neptune in the fourth. This can get confusing as well, especially when we're bringing up issues around the home or the family. So maybe you and your partner or you and your friend are deciding to do something together. Like let's say you and a roommate are deciding to build something or do something together, but then there's other roommates in the house that don't really want to do that thing or they, there's not a consensus and that's where the confusion is coming from. So this is just one example, but there is something where there's drive to move forward and also like energy leakage and confusion that's holding it back. So we have two steps forward, one step back in a sense here. So just kind of keep that in mind as you move forward. But that is what I'm seeing for you, Sag Rising. If that resonates, please let me know by liking, commenting down below. If you want astrology reading, check me out at willsboom.com. I offer life purpose readings, business readings, couples readings, past life readings, all sorts of things. So definitely check me out and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Capricorn Risings. This Libra New Moon's happening in your 10th house of career, which honestly sucks. I'm just kidding. It's honestly amazing. Um, whenever I see a new moon in the 10th house, I get super excited because I love career stuff. But also the 10th house is life objectives. It's not just career. It's our status in society. Like when we get married, that is a 10th house issue. Well, 7th house issue as well, but it's like we're changing our status in society. So there is some kind of shift here where you're having a new beginning or a leveling up in your status in some way. So this could be a new career opportunity, a new goal that you're come that is coming into your life, um, or like one of those big moments in life where you get married or have a kid or something like that. It will obviously depend on where it's activating your chart personally, like if you have any planets on there, how big this will be for you. So for some of you it could just be in a little promotion at work. And then for others of you, it could be a really big life step. This moon is also loosely conjunct Mercury and Venus. So this has a lot to do with relationships. Um, it is a Libra new moon. So there's some kind of like new leaf or new beginning in your relationship area as well and how that relates to career. So that maybe you could meet somebody new that can help you have a new career opportunity or maybe you are um, having a new leaf turnover in your career relationships or maybe your relationship with your partner or your friend is somehow going to help you in your career. So there is like this new leaf turning over in a really positive way. It's also opposite Jupiter in the fourth house. So this is going to indicate some kind of push and pull between your private life, like your home life, wanting to find a home, decorate your home, make your home really beautiful, um, be homemakery, like, you know, just anything related to your home or your family or your emotions or even financial matters, like your sense of security, those areas of your life, you are going to feel motivated by. You're going to feel like you are wanting to take care of it and um, grow in this area in some way and really show up as like a the best version of yourself and also somebody 
because Jupiter is in Aries, as somebody who does something new or takes some kind of risk um, in this area of your life that you maybe haven't done before. However, this is opposing the new moon in the 10th house. So there's something about you wanting to cultivate your internal world, your home, your family life that is taking you away from this beginning in your career. And there's something about this beginning in your career that takes you away from your home. So there is a need to balance everything. There is a need to really become disciplined and have a lot of willpower, which you will with this chariot card, um, in order to kind of bring and merge these areas of your life together. Um, this new moon is also loosely making a trine to Pluto in the first house and Mercury and Venus are making a tight trine. Venus actually an almost exact trine to Pluto in the first house. So this is a time in which you are going to feel a lot more empowered. And I'm saying this to a number of people, but especially you because Pluto is in the area of yourself. And so there's a lot of ways in which you are leveling up especially in relationships or in money that is going to feel very empowering. As I said, Pluto is also a planet that helps us see things with absolute clarity and truth and get down to the core of the matter. So if there are things going on in your relationship or in your career, um, that you are uncertain about, I think that this is a time in which you might have a, a greater understanding of what's going on. Um, you might get like these flashes of insights or a gut feeling or an intuition about what that next step is with this ace of wands you might feel this the sense of inspiration pulling you forward so with the chariot and the ace of wands i'm definitely seeing a lot of drive and inspiration um, to start and manifest something big in your life something big in your career something that's going to move you forward um, and maybe even last generations to come However, Mercury and Venus are also opposite Neptune in the third house. So even though you are getting this flash of insight about maybe what you want to do or how you want to develop as a person, the next steps you might want to take, with Neptune opposite it, there is a lot of confusion as well. So the third house has a lot to do with um, essentially like action and movement where we go and interact with our environment. So there may be some really practical ways where you feel like you're not sure how you're going to make this work. Um, you're not sure how you're going to move forward. Even though you have this chariot energy and this ace of wands, you are moving forward. There is maybe also uncertainty about that. So you kind of, maybe you know what you want, um, but you don't know the next steps, or maybe you know the next steps, but you don't know how to do it. Um, or maybe you feel like you're still, you have an overall idea of what it is you desire, but you're still missing a lot of information. So there's something that you like have yet to learn, to pick up, to interact with, to try that is going to ultimately fill in the rest of this picture. So if you guys are a little bit confused as well during this time while also feeling driven, that's totally normal. And I would wait until at least October before you make really big decisions around work or contracts or even relationships because this Neptune opposition can create very confusing conversations um, and it can make people kind of on two different pages and if there are contracts being signed it can make that um, not a good process later down the line. So as I mentioned, I think you guys are very driven right now, and that's because you have Mars making in the sixth house, which is already motivating for work, for health, for your routine. You're like, I'm going to get on top of my ish. On top of that, it's trining your chart ruler Saturn in your second house. So you're like, I'm going to get top of my ish so I can create security, financial independence, so I can be a badass bitch. And so you got all that going on, which is amazing. You're driven, you're excited. But again, Mars is making a square to Neptune in the third. So there's something where you are uncertain about the actions that you're taking or you're missing information or conversations are confusing. There's something that's draining your energy a little bit from this step, from these steps forward, from having all of your ish together all of the time. Um, but overall, I did pull a 10 of pentacles. So I do see you guys creating a lot of stability in your life and a lot more financial success as well. The 10 of pentacles is also classic for this whole family energy. Like I'm going to create a household. I'm going to have a child. I'm going to have income that lasts generations. So there is a sense of legacy 
and like creating something really strong and foundational in your life. So whatever it is you're working on right now, it's going to either be a piece of the puzzle that is long lasting or it is like the main ingredient. And so basically what I'm trying to say is you don't have to have all the answers now because whatever you are doing right now, there's something that's right. There's something that will remain. There's something that's solid that you can trust that you can rely on. And there is also a lot of unknown about this as well. There's also a lot of the picture not fully filled in. And so it's okay to trust that whatever you are investing in right now has a lot of potential to grow and to also trust the universe that the unknown factors, the confusion is going to fill in on its own as time progresses. So again, don't make really big decisions or investments or conversations at this new moon, but wait until October, wait until this Neptune moves away from Mercury and Venus and give, yeah, give yourself the opportunity to go further into what is interesting you. Because I think when you have that clarity, you're going to be unstoppable with this chariot, this ace of wands, the 10 of pentacles, Um, I really feel like you guys are moving forward in a really big way and it's okay if that Neptune square makes you also take some steps back um, because ultimately you are going to get where you want to go even if it's slower um, or more confusing than you would have liked. That's just kind of how life works, right? So that's what I'm seeing for you Capricorn. I hope that resonates. If it does, please like and comment down below. If you want an astrology reading, check me out at willsboom.com. I'm offering life purpose readings, business readings, relationship readings, past life readings, yearly reports if you're interested in what's up upcoming for you um, starting in 2023 or even this year. So definitely hit me up there and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, up next we have my beautiful Aquarius risings. This Libra new moon is happening in your ninth house which I feel like is really exciting. I love when new moons happen in the ninth house. We also have Venus and Mercury loosely conjunct this new moon. So I'm definitely getting a lot of very positive and uplifting energy. I feel like, sorry, I was just running around my house, like winded. Um, uh, I'm, I'm definitely getting the sense that you guys are feeling excited or optimistic about something. There is something on the horizon for you that may feel like it's growing, it's multiplying, it has a lot of potential. And this is a new moon related to relationships. So for many of you, this could be something that involves somebody else, whether that's working with somebody else, whether that is you seeing a future in a partnership, whether that's you meeting new friends and feeling like this is going somewhere, um, or maybe that's you even learning or studying under someone or teaching people and feeling like you are just in your element and that this opportunity has a lot of potential for you. So I'm definitely seeing that there is this very strong energy with this fool card of just being optimistic, excited, um, not even seeing how this could go wrong, basically. And this is making an opposition to Jupiter in retrograde in Aries in the third house. So there may be ways in which when things kind of get down into the details that it feels... um, like less, I don't know, like it pulls you out of the vision, if that makes sense. Jupiter in the third house also is extremely busy. So there can be something around you just having so many tasks in your daily life that you don't actually have time for this bigger vision. And so there's going to be a need for you to balance these two elements. There's going to be a need for you to balance the vision with the details, the the objectives and what you're moving towards and the excitement and the daily tasks, the grind, the busyness that you just have to do, the chores, like the things that you cannot avoid. And so there's a need to reconcile this. And with the Fool and Five of Pentacles, it may feel like, oh, I'm really excited. I'm diving into this. I'm doing it. And then the Five of Pentacles is like, well, I don't know, you know, Uh, I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I can do this. And feeling that you don't have what it takes or you don't have the time, you don't have the money, the resources to pursue something in a bigger way. But what I'm seeing with this Libra new moon is even though there is that contrast of needing to um, balance these two elements of yourself, you actually do have everything that you need. So while the balance may take effort, you do have the resources because of your 
um, determination, because of your excitement, I see that you will manifest the things that you need or you will eventually acquire them or eventually create them um, in order to make the, this vision happen. This, this new moon is loosely trining Pluto in the 12th. So this is where some of those insecurities could come up. Um, you know, this, this feeling of lack or feeling like you're not enough can be deeply, deeply buried. And it's you maybe limiting yourself and stopping yourself. But again, because this new moon is with Pluto, um, or sorry, is opposite Jupiter, I am getting the sense that we are all overcoming whatever obstacles that we feel is in front of us or inside of us. Mercury and Venus, I mentioned, are loosely conjunct this moon and they are making a strong trying to Pluto in the 12th. So it may be that resources, like financial resources, are a big factor in this opportunity or this growth that you're feeling like um, you're uncertain about. Or it could be something around the relationship itself. So there may be a fear of um, like relying on somebody or a difficult conversation or like a a vulnerable conversation, not a difficult conversation, but a vulnerable conversation that you have to have. All these things can um, make you feel like insecure in some way and uncertain in some way. And Mercury and Venus are also opposing Neptune in the second. So this is, again, a lot of uncertainty around finances and around confidence and around security. And this is not really the best time to be making a financial investment. I see that you're excited about something, but maybe you should wait until October until Neptune is no longer posing Mercury and Venus in the second. Um, because this is this is a time when we might overlook important details around finances or we might get so excited that we jump in that we like lose sight of of the the you know what we're really doing or why we're doing something or like logic and rational thought so um be be a little bit careful about that um and also around conversations in general contracts all of those things especially that are going to have to do with money assets houses anything like that um be be very careful about that until october you guys also have Mars in the fifth house making a trine to Saturn in your first house, a tight trine. So this is your opportunity to become very disciplined and driven. You are with Saturn and moving through your first house, building yourself up in society. You are achieving certain goals, moving up as a person, becoming your next version of you. And Mars here is energizing you and giving you that push the next steps, the action to go out and do that. So you're feeling driven, you're feeling disciplined, you ha you have your path, you're headed down it, all really good. But Mars is also making a square to Neptune in the second. So there is something around finances, again, that can become a source of issue for, for you here. Um, Mars in the fifth house can be sometimes a little bit impulsive with spending with this square to, to Neptune in the second. So you may have to think a little bit more long-term in regards to your finances. There may be ways also in which you need to develop your confidence um, in order to, uh, like, oh, I'm blanking on the word, in order to keep up the consistency with your own drive and assertiveness. It's like I need to work on the foundation of who I am, my inner sense of security in order to be able to show up like this consistently in my life and not just have this be a spurt right now in this moment. But with the Page of Wands and Nine of Pentacles, I do see you becoming using your passion to become very disciplined and consistent and devoted to something. And really your biggest issue right now is around confidence and finances. So um, not that this is going to be an issue long-term or anything like that, but around this new moon, it's not really the time to leap into financial ventures without really having um, the astrology or the stars on your side. Wait until the beginning of October. Um, kind of know how you're going to navigate conversations and contracts and then sign it and do it all, finalize it all in October rather than now. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius. I hope that resonates. If it does, please let me know by liking and commenting down below. If you want an astrology reading, definitely check me out at willisboom.com. I have readings about life purpose, business readings, past life readings, relationship readings, year ahead readings. So anything that interests you, definitely hit me up and I hope you have a great day. Bye. All right, and last but never least, we have my beautiful Pisces rising. For you guys, this Libra new moon is happening in your eighth house, which is often a beautiful time of revelations. With the eighth house, this is a time where we are able to connect to often something very deep within us, a deep need that may be unmet, um, a desire, a connection to 
our past that is a reason for why we are reacting a certain way in a relationship or why we're triggered a certain way. Um, I feel like many of you guys are going to become more aware of yourself for greater healing to occur, especially in regards to relationships and reliance on others, whether this is emotional, financial, physical reliance on a partner, on a friend, on a family member, you're really going to become aware of that side of yourself. Um, and I pulled the Four of Swords and the Temperance card. So this to me is you guys having some time to self-reflect and then this is allowing you to heal, to heal something that may be going on in your life. Maybe there's part of you that is afraid to be reliant on someone, especially because this new moon is opposite Jupiter in the second house in Aries. There's part of you that wants to be really driven financially, to be very financially independent, to take care of yourself, to have all your ish together, to have your assets, your home, your long-term um, finances, like your retirement you want to have it all for yourself and you're really driven and motivated by that right now. But there's also part of you that may need to rely on something outside of yourself, on something that isn't yours. Maybe that is a partner or maybe that's a bank loan or maybe that's um, inheritance, something that you didn't earn, something that you don't necessarily always have full control over long term. Maybe you have control right now, but maybe you won't always have control because of the of the nature of the eighth house. So there is something here where you guys are having to navigate that balance. How much am I self-reliant and how much am I reliant on others? And trusting that you can bring a balance to both of them. You can merge the two. Um, I think that there is needing there needs to be some healing there around fear of letting go, around fear of being vulnerable, around fear of leaning too much on others. And this new moon is loosely conjunct Mercury and Venus, so it's highly relational especially it's a, it's a new moon in libra a relationship sign so again there's this is highly relational there's something where you guys are needing to work together with someone to create something in your life this is also loosely trining pluto in the 11th so there may be some way in which your friends also offer a support or in which whoever you're relying on is going to be part of your long-term goals and your long-term vision. Maybe there's part of you that's scared also to see how um, to, to figure somebody into future plans about, can I really see them in, in my life three years from now? Can I, can I picture this and imagine this and put them there and rely on them being there and make decisions based off of that? That can feel kind of scary. So some of those things might come up right now and you might see some truths about how this person will fit into your life or this um, company or whatever can fit into your future goals and plans. Mercury and Venus, as I mentioned, are loosely conjunct this new moon. They are making a trine to Pluto in the 11th. So I think it's just everything I mentioned before, bringing all that stuff up about relationships and longevity and your future plans and your friendship support um, and how much you're willing to lean into those things versus fear them. Mercury and Venus are also opposing Neptune in the first. So there's something that's unclear about you and your life path and your future. And as a result, it can bring some lack of clarity into your relationships as well. What do I want? Who am I? You're kind of questioning those really big existential things in your life. And so as a result, it's not really the best time to make big life choices and decisions. Don't make decisions about money, your relationships, or even your life in general, because Neptune here is asking you to go inward, to connect with your spirit, and to use this time of confusion, uncertainty, haziness, in order to connect more with your emotional center so that when this does pass, you are very much aligned with where you want to go emotionally and then the logic will then follow. So again, don't make big decisions. Don't have big conversations. This is an uncertain kind of confusing time. Lastly, you guys have Mars in the fourth house making a trine an almost exact trine to Saturn in the 12th. This is a time in which you are craving stability. With Mars in the fourth, you may be motivated right now to buy a home, to redecorate your home, to create a lot of financial stability, to feel like whatever you are making in the world is going to hold you, is going to be safe, is going to be secure. And so this trying with Saturn in the twelfth, there may be part of you that's actually motivated by fear or by loss or by... Um, 
fear essentially of surrendering or not having control and um, things not working out. So just be really mindful of that, that you guys are really strong, motivated, moving ahead. But some of this might actually be coming from um, a scarcity place as well or a fear place. If not, there may be part of you that's just really motivated by your intuition, very spiritually guided, having the universe's support, or it could be a blend of the two, and it's very likely that it is. Mars in the fourth is also opposing Neptune in the first. So part of the conflict here, squaring, sorry, part of the conflict here is that your desire and drive for a sense of security, for a home, for this, that, and the other is ultimately going to be depleted a little bit or less successful just a little bit because of your confusion about yourself, because of your confusion about who you are, your life direction, what you want, where things are going. There may be even just a physical lack of vitality at this time where you may be a little bit more drained, a little bit more lethargic, and that can then lead to this kind of confusion or not having as much drive forward as as you normally would. So I t- I'm telling everyone we are moving forward. We are taking two steps forward, but maybe that square with Neptune with Mars is bringing it one step back. So it's okay if your progress is not shooting up, shooting forward. It's okay if there's a little bit of dissipation of energy or things not working out perfectly in every moment because that's what this aspect does. And this is just helping us, again, become more in tune with us with our needs, our cycles, our time for rest. Um, And so it's okay if things are not always perfect and always moving forward all the time. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Pisces Rising. I hope that resonates. If it does, please let me know by liking, commenting down below. If you want an astrology reading, definitely check me out at willsboom.com. I have relationship readings, life purpose readings, business readings. I have your head readings. This will really help you actually gain clarity on some of the areas that might be confusing for you right now. So I hope you enjoy this and have a beautiful day. Bye.